Well, Ron Bloom's been a key member, as you said, of the auto task force from the very beginning, been in the trenches on this GM uh, recovery, and he remains the administration's point man on auto issues. He joins us now, Deirdre, from uh, the White House. And Ron Bloom, thank you very much for the time this morning. Appreciate it. Give me, give me a sense, if you could, about the Obama administration's views on what's happening today with GM. How much vindication do you feel, given what's playing out? Well, first thing, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, look, we think this is a good day. Uh, 17 months and 17 days ago, this company entered bankruptcy. Many people had written it off for dead. Many people said that we were getting in without a plan to get out. Today, I think we're taking an important forward step. This is an important milestone in our commitment to the American people to exit this investment as soon as practical. Uh, we yesterday committed to sell uh, roughly 40% of our stake at $33 a share. Uh, and, if the, and if the underwriters exercise the green shoe, it will be 45% of our stake. So we've raised a substantial amount of money to repay taxpayers for the investments they made in General Motors. And, and we feel this is a good day. Ron, you know there will be people who will look at that and they will question why sell so much of the government's stake at this price, $33 a share. Are you leaving money on the table? Well, people can speculate about whether we are or we aren't. We are obviously committed under ESA to re receive a fair return for taxpayers, but we are also committed to exiting this as soon as practical. We had a lot of critics who said, you're going to get in, you're never going to get out. Uh, this is going to be government motors. President Obama wants to become the head of a car company. For 16 months, we've been disciplined in allowing the, the great management team and the good board of directors and the excellent employee relations to move this company forward. And we believe it's important both for General Motors and the remaining either 55 or 60 percent of our stake, as well as the overall American economy, that we make this exit. Where the stock goes in the future is where it goes. Uh, but we think we're we think we're doing exactly what we always said we would do, which is exiting as soon as practical. As exiting as soon as practical. Is it possible, Ron, that there could be a scenario going forward where you all exit your investment in General Motors before taxpayers are made whole? Uh, it, we, we can't say that today. The stock is going to trade as it trades. Uh, we have a six-month lockup. We will eventually sell all our shares, and at that point, obviously, people will do the accounting. And I suspect, candidly, they'll do the accounting along the way. Uh, I think the numbers are plain for people to see. Uh, we have 912 million shares before we sold. Uh, yesterday, the, the price that the underwriters agreed to purchase at was $33. So people can do the arithmetic. But I do think it's also worth remembering here that this intervention in General Motors saved by outside experts' analysis well over a million jobs. Uh, there, there were entire communities in the Midwest that would have been devastated. The entire automobile industry would have come apart if the president had not courageously intervened like he did. So we think there's a, a number of pieces that need to be on this scoreboard. And obviously, taxpayer return is a critical one. But I think saving the hundreds of communities and the millions of jobs that depend on the automobile industry and getting out of this investment also need to be on that scoreboard as well. Ron, you've been under the hood of this company for some time, and to some extent you all still are, given the role of the, the government's investment. Give me a sense what your level of confidence is in GM going forward and its profitability going forward. That's important to taxpayers to the government. Right. Well, we have been under the hood, although, again, I want to emphasize it's been in a monitoring role. We haven't been directing the affairs of the company. Look, we think the prospectus speaks for itself. We think, the, we think the value that the underwriters uh, persuaded private individual investors and large institutions on behalf of pension funds and 401k to pay w w was a fair value. I, I'm not going to go beyond that in terms, of, in terms of analyzing the company's finance. There's obviously a prospectus out there. There's a green shoe that has not been exercised, so we can't go beyond that. But I, I think the prospectus tells a fair story. And I think that on one day yesterday, the fact that somewhere in the range of $20 billion of private capital by investors committed to profit maximization, which is a great thing, believe that this company is, is, uh, is a good company, is, uh, is worth noting. You mentioned some of the investors who are buying up uh, some of these shares. They include some, some foreigners, including a Chinese company that is buying a 1% stake. Uh, they have now confirmed that that is indeed the case. Any concerns on the part of the U.S. government with those sovereign wealth funds getting involved and the Chinese participation? 
Uh, about a couple months ago, we put out uh, clear guidance on what we expected the underwriters to do. We said we wanted this investment to be sold around the world. We think there are global capital markets. That's a good thing. We said we expected it to be predominantly in North America because that is where the deepest pools of capital are. We, we said we expected them to provide substantial opportunity for retail investors. Uh, we are very confident that all of those metrics have been met. We had uh, independent advisors of our own verifying this and validating this. We are very comfortable with how the distribution came out. But we did not get involved in the individual selection of investors, picking one against the other. Um, if there are regulatory issues regarding investments, they will be handled through the normal regulatory course. But we're very comfortable that this investment, that the, the shareholders, that the underwriters of all, are all, allocating the shares to are completely consistent with our principles. All right, Ron Bloom, he's a senior advisor to the Treasury Secretary. Appreciate the time, Ron. Thanks very much.